G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is the Cross Blades mod. This mod adds three standalone swords into your game, as well as a couple of throwable items to supplement your melee gameplay, which is kind of nice. So, this is the Crucible Blade right here, and um, as you can tell, it looks like some sort of demonic artifact with all of the bony structures and the skulls and shit on it, and actually ties into Krem's tooth, which we'll see a little bit later, but we'll get into the attachments. And uh, what you can do is you can make it two-handed there, which is kind of interesting. Since everything else is going to be one-handed, we're going to make this one a little bit more unique and make it two-handed. As you can tell, it says better reach, slower to swing, ideal for power armor, because there are no two-handed animations for power armor, which is pretty decent although this thing uh, weighs nothing so yeah I'm carrying quite a little bit more dead weight now that I've switched it to a two-handed um, hilt there but whatever now you can uh, enable runes and what that does is give you better focus and sighted accuracy use upper dot when fully charged that sounds like um, something that a laser rifle charging sniper barrel would say but I like my um, better sighted accuracy when I'm using a sword, so I'm definitely going to keep the runes enabled. And you can change the blade color, we're going to go for a green blade here, why the hell not. And we can upgrade the damage with these different blades here. And the best one is um, the burning blade here, which does 323 and 150 ballistic and energy respectively, which is pretty awesome. Although it does require a hefty, I mean heaps and heaps of materials there, but you can actually um, reduce the cost of that if you have Krem's Tooth in your inventory, and it won't actually consume that once you craft it. So yeah, go ahead and grab that from which borers before you create this otherwise you'll be losing 666 bones crystals and nuclear materials that's like a whole playthrough and a half worth of those things you can change the skin of this I haven't downloaded the additional skins just to keep the overall size of this mod down plus I think the standard blade looks fine but you can do that if you feel like it legendary effect is there if you need it moving on to the laser sword so unlike the um, fishing pole of the Institute variety, this thing looks a little bit better, a little bit more high quality, and I do like how they use um, the same sort of uh, color scheme that you get on the laser guns in the vanilla game, looks really, really awesome, so you can change the skins of this, you do get the Institute one packed in with this, which is actually kind of cool, makes sense for an Institute weapon to be highly advanced like this, but the rest of them, low quality, haven't downloaded them, you can go ahead and upgrade this thing, the best thing you can do is have an overclocked um, capacitor there, I suppose, and you can also have that in a blue color there, and a legendary effect if you want it. Moving on to the Plasma Katana, basically this thing is like a more modernized shish kebab and if you're a weeb, you'll feel right at home with this uh, Japanese weapon if you're into those Japanese cartoons, so that's nice. There's uh, the, also the Institute thing, uh, Institute skin as default there, which looks pretty good and there's a couple of extra things if you feel like it. There's a Vault one, which actually might be interesting. Now you can upgrade this all the way to Blade number 5, Plasma, Crystal, Sharp and June, blah blah blah. Um, yeah, there you go, that's what it looks like. Um, we seem to be missing the blade though. I don't know, maybe that's a glitch, but yep, we've also got a legendary effect on that. Okay, enough of uh, actually modifying these swords, let's go and find some gunners to um, chop, I guess. We'll, we'll, we'll chop them apart, like we'll hack them apart, it'll, it'll be gross. Righto, so here we are in Gunners Plaza, let's take a look at our three blades in first and third person, and then we can get moving on to actually killing some dudes. So that's what the two-handed crucible blade looks like very demonic looking it's even got like demonic text there if anyone can translate that I'd be very appreciative to know what that actually says and uh, yes a little amendment that little um, FX thing in the attachment section doesn't actually change the color of the blade it just changes that color of the glowing spot under the blade there that what's in green now but if it was in red it obviously be in red so that's what that looks like moving on to the laser sword this is what it looks like in third person, and you won't notice it because I haven't shown you what this thing looks like as standard, but the intensity of the blade does change when you upgrade the um, capacitors of this thing, which is really good. Moving on to the last plasma blade, yep, it's a shish kebab, but with plasma and greeny flames, and as you can tell, that blade is completely energy now, and there's no physical metal thing anymore, so yeah, that is why it um, ceased to exist when we attach that, so that's pretty good. 
Now, instead of going all stealthy stealthy, we're going to test how these things go um, without all of that stealth nonsense. So what I'm going to do here is going to walk around the corner and exploit bats just a little bit, just a little bit. So we get three hits with this two-handed thing, and um, we can do a fair amount of damage with it. I feel like we missed a shot there. Yes, we did. I'm not sure why it skipped it. It just did. And we'll go for a finisher against you. So um, if we get into a fist fight with these gunners, um, they're going to be able to out-hit us. So if they can just keep staggering us here, we're not going to have any chance of actually hitting them back. Now, as you can tell, they're on fire. It does do a tiny little bit of damage, but it's going to be like nothing worth noting. You can see, it's not even showing up. So yes, this is the reason why you really don't want to use um, weapon or melee weapons without vats because they can just do that all day. They can't actually block you in vats, so that is why you want to get yourself blitz and vats then. Woo, Ella really wanted that gunner captain dead. Okay, so I did mention throwables, right? Let's go ahead and show these off against these stupid turrets. Hopefully these aren't explosives. We'll see how we go. Okay, they're gonna... They're going to stagger me out of the throwing thing. So we're going to go and attack that turret over there. So it will give this a chuck. See how it goes. As you can tell, it's like a throwing blade. And, um, ooh, looks like my camera. I have to sort of move my camera. So if I go over sort of there. There we go. A direct hit. Doesn't do a lot of damage. In fact, it does a surprisingly low amount of damage, but it is nice to have a range alternative. Although you're going to have to move the camera a little bit over to actually make use of that accurately at range, which is a shame. We'll move on and take these stupid turrets out in fact, because we can't possibly get close to those guys without being staggered, because one of them is on the explosive side, so that is why we can't do that. Let's go ahead and try to take out this particular gunner. Um, 101 melee style there. We did manage to disarm that gunner there because they hit us and we've got the um, rooted perk there, which is good. And as you can tell, that little one that I got in the damage floater there was actually the extra... Oh, stop hitting me like that. God damn it. See, this is why melee weapons suck. Since you can't swing them around like a mad person would back in your wood Fallout New Vegas, um, yeah. There's this swing speed can almost be beaten by anyone with their fists out. So in a way, disarming your targets actually kind of bites you in the ass because they can hit faster than you unless you're using something crazy like a ripper. Then, yeah, they'll automatically gun bash you as soon as you walk up to them there, which staggers you. That takes you out of the attack. So there's a lot of things that don't really go right with you if you ever try using melee without the use of that. So, yeah, if you're actually going to use a play of that playthrough, you're bloody mad if you're gonna... a melee playthrough, you're bloody mad if you're not gonna use that all the time. Especially when you've got things like Blitz. That's just overpowered. Crazy overpowered. And, yeah, you can actually outheal the laser sword. This is a little bit underwhelming, apparently. Get your ass on the ground there. There we go. Okay, not really impressed so far with these weapons. Let's see if the plasma uh, katana can pick up the slack here. It's already off to a bad start because um, I think it's a weebu weapon. I don't like my Japanese anime cartoons. I don't like being associated with them. So uh, just by um, this weapon being of Japanese and Weibu descent is um, guilty by association. But with the cheeky sneak attack critical, we can obviously do heaps of damage. And um, that's not really anything to um, see as noteworthy because I could be doing that one-shotting thing with a basic switchblade. So yeah. We'll do some cheeky max action here with some blitz. And yeah, we do suffer a little bit there because uh, we're no longer getting snake attack criticals, and at this point, we might actually have to wait for our AP to get back before Bridget rolls around, because she's got a nasty pistol on her that I don't want to deal with. This person, however, didn't really see me in time, so we might as well take advantage of that, slipping back into caution, which is useful. Right back into it. I'm guessing the giant glowing um, sword that I have kind of gives me away. Thank you, Mysterious Stranger, for finishing that bloke off. What we'll do is, um, we'll, we'll, we'll just go for some hits in here. <laughs> okay, Captain Bridget destroyed us there. We'll try again, except with stealthiness.
Right, we'll try this again, but a little bit more on the stealthy side. I think the best performing weapon out of the bunch is obviously the plasma katana there. So, you know, that's nice. It's also got the plasma cartridge on the bottom there. I didn't notice that before. So, we're going to learn from our mistake. I'm going to make a point here. And the point is, um, you'll never want to use melee as anything but that and stealth. I really thought Big Leagues 4 would take out the front man there. That's okay. Okay, stealthy time is over, but that's okay. I think it's only this lot up here that's actually detected me. Um, don't worry about the turrets firing. I'm guessing that's really quiet to the obviously deafened gunners in the next room there. So that all works for us. We'll jump straight down. Won't even bother using the throwables. They're too weak and it'll actually take less of our time to kill them like that. And then we'll teleport across the room. We'll add a crit into there and kill that person on the instantaneous side. And same to you, just got to get on the edge of our blitz range and whack you a couple of times. Cut that bloody lid off ya. And then same thing goes for you. We'll finish you off with that. There we go. See, we're doing a lot better now that we're using this with uh, stealth, melee, blitz, that type deal. All right, where are you? You took a long time to notice there. You really think that a uh, giant plasma sword would be more noticeable than uh, like taking two or f yeah, six seconds to actually realize that there's someone behind you trying to bloody kill you with it. Ooh, okay. That's a nice spot for that gunner commander to be in. So yeah, we'll take that as we go. Oh, it looks like that person's drawn their gun. Can we actually... No, we can't attack that one. That sucks. Yep, nice double kill there. Thank you, Big Leagues 4. These ones already saw me, so what we're going to do is just crit them. We got a little bit of a cheeky hit with Big Leagues 4 damage again, so there we go. Ah, yes, Captain Bridget. Um, wow, I'm actually out of AP, so I'm going to tactically retreat. Take this. A and this. And... Oh, God. Okay, maybe direct hit. That's how we got to play this. Oh, man. Okay, so basically what happens... You can pick those knives back up, right? Because you can pick up throwing knives. And they'll be unpowered now, so... They won't explode like they would. But uh, what they'll do is they'll just act as regular sort of throwing knives type of deal. There we go. That's how we finish Captain Bridget. Through gratuitous bat crit spammery. Okay. Let's just wait until the heat dies down for a moment. Kind of want my uh, Cedar's rocket bat right now. I feel like that does a lot more damage than whatever these can give. Also, I think this this particular one is cursed too because all of the demon riding. Maybe it's a curse. I'll translate it from what I know of. It says, Captain Noob shall not do very well with these weapons. One, because he's too stubborn to put it below very hard, and he can't be bothered getting his controller out for more responsive controls on his uh, melee character. You know what? That's no excuse to hate this thing. Oh. Okay, that was exceedingly awkward, but they didn't hit us back, which was nice, so we'll move on from this. Ooh, a bloody walking cane. I don't think that would outperform our current weapons. No, we'll leave that one alone. Kill them all. Hey, that's a cool Metallica album. Hey, that one looks kind of like Captain Bridget. You must be a synth as well. Holy shit, just fucking die. Man, this thing is trash. You look cool, but you're not that great. See you later. We're going to punch stuff now. Watch this. I, I feel like I can do better damage with the punchy punchy instead. See, look at that. 389 off the bat. 162. Look how fast we're hitting him. Blazing speed. Fists of iron and stuff. And what we can do here is back off a little bit. Get our bats. Uh, get our not blitz bonus. There we go. That's working pretty well. And then we can continually punch her in the head. No, I think it's a little bit quicker like this. There we go. 
Hey, maybe we should just go to fists every now and then when there's something that I can't really kill very easily and just um, knock them down like that. That's something I should probably do. That's something you could always do. You've always got your fists if you do equip your weapons. Although Fallout 4 doesn't like you having a hot key to bring your fists out, so um, having a pair of brass knuckles on you is actually a nice idea if you want to actually do that sort of thing. Proper viable tactics there that I never use, although sometimes you can't be bothered switching weapons. So they have it, the crossblades in Gunners Plaza. Um, they're alright. They they look really cool. They they perform like shit, but they look really cool. So yeah, if you're into really cool looking weapons and not playing on big boy very hard difficulty, then yeah, I give this weapon a pass. But uh, yeah, on PC I could easily up the damage if I feel like it using a thing called creation kit. I'm familiar with that, so that's nice. We'll move on to something else. Righto, whilst we kill Swan, I just want to consolidate my thoughts a little bit more explanation of what I think about this weapon. And you might think that I was being a little bit too harsh on it, telling you the performance is shit, but how I rate performance is um, I sort of get the things from the vanilla game and sort of go from there. And uh, it's extremely disappointing to have a weapon mod of this size, right, and have it, like, inferior to the weapon... Um, not the weapon mods, but uh, the weapons uh, combinations that you can get in the game already. So yeah, it kind of sucks that this thing is outperformed by things in the new world DLC. Um, I'm using the uh, term vanilla a little bit more liberally there, but you get what I mean. When you've got things already presented in the game by the developers that are better in performance than this particular weapon, then I kind of struggle trying to justify a reason to use the thing. So we'll hide in this house here, owned by Mrs. Skeleton, and uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and attack Swan once again, once we're back into caution, which we should be. He looks like in some sort of passive state. We'll go ahead and attack him like this. We'll keep our sword away, simply because that helps us out in our stealthing capabilities, because yeah, um, having a giant glowing sword isn't the most stealthy thing in the world. So, we're doing okay. There's no way in hell we'd be able to stop him just with the base damage of these weapons. You could probably get away with that if you had a super sledge. I mean, a sledgehammer with a rocket attached to it. But, yeah, maybe not for this weapon. Definitely not for this weapon. Wow, he's actually seen us again. This this sucks. Uh, Ally, you need to train train yourself on stealth better. Also, that's an untextured doghouse. Um, just ignore that one. And he's taking on some bears. Now, don't get me wrong, I do enjoy most of Nero's mods, including the tactical swim. So I think that one's actually taken down. Don't know why he did it. Maybe he didn't want to be associated with all of those, uh, um, how we should we describe it? I think they like to call them slooty mods, because, yeah, that isn't, because that isn't the most, um, unsubtle way to call it what it is ever. But, yeah, um... He's also done a couple of other things. I think the break action laser, I found that one to be a little bit meh as well in terms of performance, but it was pretty awesome for what it was. Ah, it detected once again, so almost out of action points at this point. We'll see if we can get a cheeky little block there. No way, nowhere near. He actually has to hit us directly rather than being in the splash damage radius to get that to work. Okay. Slipping out of danger once more. See, getting out of danger, that's the easy part. And then um, when we actually attack him, that's when it gets a little bit difficult. So we're kind of up shit creek without a paddle here. Or rather, our paddle is a demonic sword that'll just boil the water around us and we'll be going bloody nowhere at all. So yeah, it's, it's not an easy weapon to kill Swan with, even with spamming sneak attack criticals like he would. I mean, zero chance here. He must have slipped just out of range. That's okay. Alright, Swan is finally dead, and I think that is about it for Crossblades. Awesome looking weapons. Performance is meh. That's my final conclusion. Download at your own will. It is a nice mod all around, though. Um, not sort of uh, leaving all of the performance stuff out. The performance, I'm going to roll with that. Um, yeah, it's actually a really solid weapon mod that I would recommend to all. So if you're not playing on Big Boy very hard difficulty, then download at your own will. Thank you for watching, guys.